which NFL teams made the best picks on day two of the 2022 NFL draft. What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here, here to break down my favorite picks from round two and round three, day two of the 2022 NFL draft. In the comment section, let me know your favorite picks. These are my favorite selections from round two and three, where a lot of teams are taking swings at some high upside prospects and trying to find some day one starters at positions of need. These grades are based on my evaluation of the prospects, the fit, the need, how they fit the team, the culture, and the scheme, and more. So if you enjoy NFL content all year round, NFL draft coverage just like this, I will come out with my NFL draft grades. Make sure that you do subscribe to the channel and Gronk Spike the like button. Let's get started with my grades for day two of the 2022 NFL draft. You start off at the top. Pick number 34. My favorite player in this draft, Christian Watson. I've made a video about him. Many of you have probably seen that video and are tuning into this video to see what I have to say about this pick. I love Christian Watson, guys. He was my number two receiver in this draft. I am much higher on him than a lot of other people. I think he has extremely, extremely rare traits. He is not only vertically fast, but he is horizontally extremely quick and fluid for a man of his size at about six foot four, maybe even six foot five. He has the same physical profile of a Randy Moss. He has incredible length. He can jump out the gym. He's got all the tools to be an alpha number one X wide receiver. And now he gets to play with Aaron Rodgers. Not only that, but his tape is a lot better than I feel like people are giving him credit for. He does have the twitch and that ability and quickness to shake people at the line and run routes and separate by running routes, not just by running past people. The one area that I do think he needs to get better is in contested situations. And we'll see how that goes with Aaron Rodgers because Rodgers is great with back shoulders and timing with guys like Devontae Adams. But this is a guy that, okay, you had MVS in the past. This is like MVS on steroids. This guy is going to unlock the deep parts of the field, but then he's also going to give you a Debo Samuel element to your offense where he can take the football on jet sweeps. He can take it in the backfield. And if you want to learn more about Christian Watson, do check out that video as I talk about it and I give you a soliloquy about why I love the guy for about 20 minutes. So go check that video out. Love that pick. Roger McCreary. Pick 35 to the Tennessee Titans. Roger McCreary, to me, reminds me when I watched him of Malcolm Butler. So the more that I think about this pick, the more that I love this pick for the Tennessee Titans. Because this is a feisty, sticky, man-to-man -man corner that I believe Mike Vrabel is going to love his tenacity and is going to love the way that he plays man. I just love these type of corners. You know, he's a little bit undersized, but he plays on the perimeter. He gets in the face of wide receivers. He's a very frustrating player to play against. And he played the best competition at wide receiver and even oftentimes shut them down. Players at Alabama, players at LSU, wide receivers that are very highly touted. Roger McCreary was phenomenal against those guys. Like I said, a lot of Malcolm Butler traits, that feistiness, that edge, that man-to-man -man press ability, that's what the Titans are looking for here. Now, the question is, where does he play? Does he play in the slot? Does he play on the perimeter? I think they just drafted a good football player that will add depth to their corner position. I think he's going to end up playing on the outside, but his arms are a question. That length was a question, which could lead him to becoming a slot corner. I think he has enough quickness to play in the slot. So we'll see how the Titans develop that corner position with him now a high investment in the second round. But I really like the player. Jalen Petrie at pick number 37 to the Texans. A very good football player and playmaker in the secondary for the Texans here at pick 37. 
just a nose for the football. He's around the football everywhere. He's going to play nickel corner potentially for the Texans or free safety. That's kind of the spots I see him playing. He could even play a little strong safety as well because of his ability to read the run game and shoot through gaps and make plays that way. But he's an extraordinary blitzer. I love how he's involved in certain blitz packages. I want to see how Lovey Smith is going to use him because like I said, a lot of versatility, big time playmaker, and he can line up in a multitude of spots. But he's a leader. He's a great tackler. And he's going to shut down a lot of these teams that run like gimmick bubble screen plays, try to get that screen game going. He is just very instinctual. He's going to read it. He's going to go to it. He's going to make plays. And he's also going to contribute with sacks, tackles for loss. He's that modern nickel player, but also with the versatility to play a bit of safety as well. I really like him. Kenneth Walker to the Seahawks. Now, a lot of people are probably going to kill this pick because it's a running back instead of a quarterback here for Seattle. But Kenneth Walker was my favorite running back in this draft. I love Kenneth Walker. He's a little bit shorter. I think he's about 5'9", but he is a tank, and he's built really well. You know, he kind of has that Frank Gore-ish type of size, like, lower half, where he's got that great legs to motor and run through and grind through contact and break tackles. He's got absolutely elusive feet for a guy with such power and straight line speed he absolutely makes people miss in the open field and can elude multitudes of defenders in a single play Kenneth Walker is a complete runner of the football he's got all of it the vision the explosion the quickness the elusiveness the power all of it is there for Kenneth Walker to be one of the best rushers in the NFL from day one. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was a top five rusher in the NFL next year, even on a team like the Seahawks. Now, I do wonder how is that distribution going to come in the backfield with Rashad Penny there and maybe even Chris Carson, depending on his health situation. But I love this guy. Like, by far my number one running back. He does need to learn in terms of his pass protection and his pass game skills. But as a runner, he is a absolute demon. Andrew Booth at pick 42 is a steal to me. I understand there was medical concerns. I'm not too aware of those medical concerns in terms of how big they will be entering the NFL, but he's a first round talent. And especially in this draft where he was clearly defined as a first round talent for so long, it's hard to get these type of players in this draft where there was a big drop off after the elite players. So to get a player that could potentially be considered a top 20 talent in a class where I had him flirting with the top 20 in this class, Andrew Booth has great ball skills, like phenomenal ball skills. He's got good press coverage ability, but he's very, very good in zone. I think he's going to fit what the Vikings do with their multitude of two deep, two safety deep coverages, cover sixes, cover fours. He's got enough speed to play in that cover four where it's basically like you're on an island on the outside, but then also the ability in zone to, you know, drop back in a cover two and stuff like that and read the defense. So, and read an offense and a quarterback. So I feel like Booth is going to be potentially a really big pick and a steal here and a number one corner in the NFL if his medical's clear, and if he can stay healthy. If he can't, I still think it was worth the swing, so I like that pick. David Ajabo is similar here to Andrew Booth. Maybe not the long-term concerns with his health, but concerns with his health nonetheless. That's why he dropped the second round. I think he would have been a late first-round pick if he didn't have the ACL injury and he wasn't dealing with, you know, a really late injury in the process that set him out. I couldn't remember if it was ACL or Achilles. But regardless, David Ajabo is an electric playmaker at the edge position. He's just a very, very fluid athlete that you rarely find in the second round. These type of guys go in the first round. And this was such a Ravens pick. He's got all the skills to be a not a Terrell Suggs, but like the new age Terrell Suggs of this defense. He's very similar to Jason Away on how freaky they were, you know, coming out of the draft in terms of they took that guy last year. They take this guy in the second round this year. He's got the pure bend and twitchiness to be a really electric pass rusher off the edge. So 
the Ravens needed some pass rush, you get a connection from Michigan, given that there's a lot of ties there in Baltimore. I think this pick could really work out. Seems like a good kid. I think he's going to work hard to recover, and eventually he'll become a main pass rusher and a force for the Ravens defense in the coming years. Jaquan Brisker at pick 48. Fan of this pick, fan of the player. I understand that the Bears could have went in many different directions here, maybe with a pass rusher, maybe with a defensive lineman, maybe wide receiver, whatever. But Jaquan Brisker, I just really like the player. I think he was arguably a first round talent just in terms of his mentality, his leadership, his versatility. He's one of the only safeties in college football who played over 100 snaps at strong safety, nickel corner, and box linebacker. So that is his versatility. He's not only a guy that gets downhill and can make plays in the running game, see it, read it, and shoot it, but he's also a guy that can cover in space, which speaks to his ability to play in the slot. So he's going to give you versatility in your secondary to do a lot of different things. And I think he complements somebody like Eddie Jackson extremely well. So Jaquan Brisker is already, he's just a day one playmaker for a Bears defense. And I think he fits Matt Eberflus's, if he's going to stick with a lot of cover three, I think he fits that very, very well, playing that, you know, little middle of that field as a strong safety there. Alec Pierce, pick 53 of the Colts. You get Matt Ryan, a number two receiver. I think Alec Pierce has the potential to become a number one receiver. He's got all the tools to be that, right? He's got the size, he's got the hands, the contested catching ability, and the straight line speed that will threaten the defense vertically. That is an area that I think the Colts needed to get better in, which was that vertical speed to burn you down the field. Michael Pittman isn't really that. He's more of a physical possession receiver. So you've got a nice complement outside. Matt Ryan's going to be able to use that big framed wide receiver who can go up and get it. Pierce, I didn't sense his craftiness in his route running that other people did just because I thought he was a little tight as a athlete, but I do really love him as a X receiver who can catch the football, run past you, or just straight up beat you on a release physically, and then go up and get the football. So Alec Pierce is a great combination of size and speed, and it definitely upgrades the Colts receiver room, which I thought was their biggest need entering this draft. Sky Moore, the Kansas City Chiefs. I love Sky Moore. He is one of my favorite players in this draft. His ability to break tackles, his ability to break plays open, his twitchiness at the line of scrimmage to win right away on a release. He's going to have versatility to play outside or inside because he's got vertical speed, but he also is really, really quick to be able to beat people on quick routes over the middle. So Sky Moore is a playmaker and he's going to be utilized a lot of different ways for the Chiefs right away. I think Patrick Mahomes is going to love this pick. Drake Jackson to the 49ers. Now, I didn't really think of this as a big need for the 49ers entering the draft, but they did lose Arden Key and D Ford's getting a little bit older and he's injury prone. But Drake Jackson, I think was too good of a value for the Niners to pass up and that's why they went with him here at pick 61. I think Drake Jackson has immense upside, which is why I thought he was going to get picked closer to round one. He's got incredible bend off the edge, which I think is, is definitely an area that teams covet for pass rushers for sure. So pick 61 could be a steal just because he has the dimension of becoming a great pass rusher in this league. He's also got enough fluidity as an athlete, you know, to be a dangerous, consistent pass rusher. I think he's going to be involved as a pass rushing threat from day one. He needs development in terms of his play strength, in terms of his ability to set the edge and become a run defender, but the Niners don't ask a ton of their edges to be run defenders. They ask a lot of their interior linemen to do that. So Drake Jackson, I think, is a perfect fit for this defense and a great pick at 61, a value. Nick Benito at the end of the second round to the Broncos, pick 64. Nick Benito is similar to Drake Jackson, both very good pass rushers. Benito can really bend. Like he has arguably the best bendiness in this draft to get around the corner, dip and get to the quarterback. His problem to me is his size. He's a little small, which I think a lot of teams looked at him as potentially only a pass impact player. But if you get a guy that can contribute with a a decent amount of sacks and some pressures on key downs, he's got that sort of spark, especially for a championship level team that the Broncos want to be. This can be a guy that contributes right away and helps 
you know, the depth behind guys like Bradley Chubb and Randy Gregory. So Nick Benito is really, really good. And if he could develop more as a run defender, he could actually become a starter on every down in this league. Entering round three now, where we had 11 of my favorite picks in round two. I believe I put 10 for round three here. Chad Muma. Let's begin with pick 70. Muma is just a very smart linebacker who's got a lot of well-rounded skills. You know, he's good versus the run because he really sees it well and he can read it and attack it. And he can flow sideline to sideline. He's got enough coverage ability. I think he's going to be somebody... See, this is what I'm evaluating here. Chad Muma was a good player. I thought he could have been a late second rounder. He was a top five linebacker for me in this class. Maybe not physically, but just as a player. He was productive where he played in his final season. So, Chad Muma is going to be an instant impact defender at the linebacker level for Jacksonville. My question is, was this a great need pick because you picked Devin Lloyd? So I feel like Jacksonville just really liked the player here. So honestly, Chad Muma is somebody that I just like the value and I like the player more so than I like the fit or the need. So I just couldn't leave him off here in round three. Travis Jones at pick 76. You could argue Travis Jones was a first round talent. He's got a great mix of great run strength and ability to shut down the run as a big nose tackle, which is what he's going to be for the Ravens. But he's also got a little bit of a hint of pass rushing ability. He's a big guy. You're looking at somebody that could be a Calais Campbell or Brandon Williams type replacement here. And I believe he was kind of like the lesser version of Jordan Davis in this draft. You know, I thought a lot of people, including myself, thought that Jordan Davis was going to go to the Ravens. So they get Travis Jones in the third round, which is an absolute value and a steal. He was at least, in my opinion, a second round player. And they get him at pick 76. Another great scheme fit for the Ravens. Bernard Raymond to the Colts. And I know Connor McLeod right now has probably already commented that it's Bernard Ryman. So I'm going to go with that as well. But the Colts, this is a guy that was maybe a first round pick, if not a second round pick. They got him at pick 77, which is impressive value. PFF ranked him as a top 20 player in this class, which is crazy. And a, I think top four tackle in this class right after Cross and Neal and Aquanu. So he was the fourth guy for them. I mean, just that alone and his grading by Pro Football Focus at college is just incredible value. He could be a day one starter for the Colts, a team that's trying to win right away. He's a little bit older, but he hasn't played a ton of football. So he is still developing. The worry is here that when you're a little bit older, you're already fully developed as a man and a player, but he still has time to develop his technique and get better. So I think it's worth taking the risk there on an older prospect. I think he's a great value at pick 77. Nicobe Dean's also a great value, pick 83. Now we don't know what his injury exactly is here, but with Nicobe Dean, I'm not the biggest fan of him, to be honest. I thought he was a second round player. So to see him fall out of the first round wasn't surprising in the least. But to see him drop all the way to like the mid third round, was pretty shocking to me just because of all the traits that Nicobe Dean can bring to your football team, right? He's very, very smart. He's very, very good as a leader of a defense. He's a very good communicator in the middle of a defense. He's very good at reading an offense and making plays. And behind that massive defensive line, I'm not as concerned about his size. This could end up being a steal here, Nicobe Dean, due to his intangibles and due to him being in a perfect spot for him to succeed. So Nicobe Dean might have an impact on this defense right away, and it was certainly a need for the Eagles. So I love this pick, man. Marcus Jones was another pick I loved. You know, I haven't loved the Patriots draft. That is my team. I haven't loved their draft so far, but Marcus Jones has been my favorite pick by far. I love Marcus Jones. He's a versatile player. He actually played some receiver. He's a corner. He played some receiver in college a little bit. He returned kicks. He returned punts. He's just a playmaker. He's got great ball skills and he is plays with his hair on fire. 
It's a cliche, but when you watch him on tape, really, really good in terms of his quickness in the slot. He's a slot corner. He's about five foot eight on a good day. He's small, but he's got a pretty thick frame for that size, and he can move laterally extremely well and play man coverage and really, really, really read and react. So Marcus Jones is going to be maybe even down the road, the Jonathan Jones replacement, but he's going to help them cover, you know, the guys like Isaiah McKenzie, who they had problems with last year. So Marcus Jones can fly. He's got speed. He's got quickness. He's going to be able to play in the system, and it gives them great depth at that position in 2022. Malik Willis, pick 86, another value here, just because you're getting a potential starting quarterback at pick 86. I mean, I'm not the biggest Malik Willis guy. Honestly, if I was telling you right now what I evaluated him as was the third best quarterback in the class. You can go back and check that if you like and see what I said about him. But honestly, when I watched him, I thought he was a project. So picking him in the third round made a lot of sense. I never thought that would happen though. So at the end of the day, getting somebody with the great arm, getting somebody that can break tackles like he's playing a bunch of boys out there and be able to extend plays and make plays the way Malik Willis does, do I ever think he's going to be a great quarterback? I probably don't, to be honest with you. But the Tennessee Titans just threw a dart, and if it works out, it's a phenomenal pick. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't really matter. It's a third-round pick. So whether you love or hate Malik Willis, it's a great pick. And I'm not even the biggest fan, you know, but he also has great off the field intangibles that you have to love about the pick. And it puts some pressure on Ryan Tannehill and also gives them an alternative down the road if Tannehill, you know, plays bad or just struggles or, you know, maybe prices himself out of range. So Malik Willis could be the future for the Titans. I also love his fit in a run heavy offense as well with his ability to be a run weapon. I wouldn't be shocked to see Mike Vrabel put him in some wildcat to start his career. Sean Ryan, I believe is how you say his name, but I've been a fan of him throughout the process you know, just hearing about what other people talk about him. I didn't study him because I I don't go super in depth with offensive linemen. You know, some of the guys in the first round, obviously, but in the third, fourth round, you know, I kind of just leave that alone just because to be honest, I'm not like the technic technician like some other guys are with offensive line play. I, I couldn't really tell you much, but what I do like about him is he's a perfect fit for the Packers because he's got great movement ability. He's got great feet and he's also got I believe just that run blocking ability that you look for in a zone blocking Matt LaFleur Packers lineman. And you got to give the Packers credit with offensive linemen. They're very good at finding these guys in the middle rounds. This is another example. This is, I think, a guy that I mocked to them because I really like the feet here. So he's a guy with high upside. And I think that's a good pick in the third round. Matt Corral, pick 94, maybe the best pick of day two. Uh, Matt Corral was my number one quarterback in the draft. And I think Kenny Pickett is more pro ready. So I had Kenny Pickett at first as my number one quarterback because of his pro ready traits. But Matt Corral ended up bypassing him. I I thought at the beginning when I was watching the quarterbacks, I was going to make Matt Corral my number one, but I just had concerns about okay, what's his processing skills at the next level? You know, his frame is a little bit slender and smaller than I would like from a quarterback. There were nitpicks that I didn't love about Matt Corral, but what I do love about Matt Corral, first off, his toughness. He is extremely tough. Running the football, getting hit, doesn't matter. He's one of those guys that you want to cheer for because he can take a lick. On top of that, He's got incredible release. I mean, his release is going to be elite from day one. You're going to notice it in the preseason, how quickly he can get rid of the football at such a rapid rate as well. It's not like a guy that just gets rid of it with a weak arm. It's a quick release with a big arm as well attached to it. If he can, you know, loosen it up a little bit, it might be a cannon at the next level, you know, similar to Aaron Rodgers did from college to the pros. He's got really good feet. You know, that shows up as a runner. I don't think he's going to be much of a runner at the next level in terms of like running design power runs like he did at college, but he can do that. And he's got breakaway speed. He's got some speed to him. I definitely think when he sees a hole to scramble, he's going to be able to pick up some yards running the ball. Similar to Sam Darnold for the Panthers, but I would say even better than that. He's got legitimate speed and legitimate quickness. 
um, and that quickness to avoid people in the pocket. He's also got a big arm and can place the football anywhere on the field he wants, and he's he's accurate. To me, he was probably a first-round talent if you separate him from the system. Like, the system in Ole Miss was pretty much his problem, right? Because he ran a lot of RPO. So it was a lot of one read and shoot type of stuff, right? So he's reading a couple people, he's reading his keys, and he makes a decision. He made it quickly, right? He read it correctly a lot of the time, and he executed very well, but you wondered why he didn't run more pro stuff. So it's going to take some time for him to adjust to pro level offense, but if they're smart with how they use him, and if they can develop him right, he could be a really good quarterback. Like this guy could be a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, which is why I ranked him as my top guy in this class. Jeremy Rucker to the Jets. Maybe the most complete tight end in this draft. He wasn't my favorite. I still think that was McBride, but a few people ranked him number one as their number one tight end or number two tight end. So, you know, he's somebody that's just a complete player. And why I like it is because he fits the Jets in terms of their philosophy, right? They're going to want to run the ball. And I think Rucker can contribute as a run blocker on top of being a deceptive receiver. If he developed into somebody like a Dalton Schultz, I wouldn't be too shocked by that. He's got that sort of skill set, a well-rounded tight end. Leo Chanel is the final favorite pick. Leo Chanel, I thought was going to go to my Patriots. Ultimately, he goes to the Chiefs. The Chiefs have crushed the draft so far. A Cook was another guy I thought I might put on this list, but Leo Chanel is a great player. I love him. He's well-rounded. He's a great athlete. He's a great leader. He led one of the best defenses in college football. He can come downhill and play the run really well downhill, smack people. There were reps against Tyler Linderbaum where he won. Also, on top of that, he's got a little bit of pass rushing ability. And I think deceptive coverage ability. I think some people are critiquing him there, but I do think he's a fluid enough athlete. Just check his 40 time to be able to run with tight ends and cover backs. So Leo Chanel could end up being a very good linebacker in the NFL and one that fits Spagnolo's system pretty darn well as well. So those are my favorite picks of day two, round two and round three. I hope you enjoyed this video, my analysis. Let me know in the comments your favorite picks of day two. Give me a couple in round two. Give me a couple in round three and your thoughts on what your team did today. It's Mitch. Thanks for watching. Gronk spike the like button and subscribe for more BLV. Peace.